it is a brand new year and you're feeling motivated and inspired to create new goals and a fresh vision for your life and your business. But what happens to the rest of the year? According to statistics, a whopping 92% of people that set new resolutions and big goals in the beginning of the year never actually end up achieving them. So how do we not fall into that 92%? In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you three non-negotiable things that you want to be considering when you're first planning out your goals so that you can actually create long-lasting commitment and build momentum for the goals that you really want to achieve. If you're new here, I'm Lydia Lee, and I help 9to5 escapees and budding entrepreneurs to create their dream business without struggling with self-doubt overthinking and complicated strategies. So if you are looking to build a business that you love, that's specifically designed from your strengths, your values, and your personality, be sure to hit the subscribe and the notification bell button to tune in for videos just like this one. And also stay tuned at the end of this particular video, I'm going to be showing you how to join a free masterclass I'm hosting called Activate Your 2021 Goals, uh, where I'm not only going to help you plan out your goals, but we're also going to craft the strategies that's going to help you to activate these goals into life. So I hope you join me at the end of this video. So what's the thing that actually encourages us and inspires us to actually stick to our goals? Well, the first thing is actually choosing the right goals to start with and choosing meaningful goals is the key here. Now, I know that you've heard the word meaningful, but what does it really mean to you? Sometimes we get ideas for goals based on what we see going on out there, what our friends have, what someone we respect, perhaps in the business world or in the influencer Instagram platforms might be saying that we may want in our lives too, but really taking a time to pause and really connect with what is the goals that are actually meaningful for the life that you want to lead. So many times when I see my clients and students talk about their goals, they'll come up with these big daunting goals like make six figures in six months or make six figures by the end of this year. And all of that sounds great. And I absolutely hope that you will make a six figure business if that is the goal that you want. But in a way, where does that number come from? Did you decide that six figure is the right number to be reaching? And is that really the most meaningful way to articulate your goal? So for example, right, instead of saying, I want to make six figures, you might want to consider asking yourself, what is the dream life that I really want to have and to experience? And how much does it cost for me to get there? That is a much more in-depth question that can really help you to create some action around identifying this goal. Thinking about your expenses, thinking about the people in your life, thinking about particular ideas and goals that might be beyond the place that you currently live in. Maybe you're like me, you want to live abroad. I live in Bali at the moment where the cost of living isn't as much. And when I was thinking about moving to to a place like Bali, I did a lot of research online about what, what the average cost of living is, where I'm not living, you know, uh, hand to mouth, <laughs> if you will, right? And living in a comfortable life. And that was definitely um, a much lower number than I anticipated than living in a place like Vancouver, Canada, which is where I'm from originally. So really thinking out your goals, thinking about what you really want in your life uh, will help you to cost out what's really ideal for you uh, and what you might be moving and growing into in the near future, right? So really make these goals specific to helping you achieve the life you want. And also perhaps this question can prompt for you, what is that life you want if it's not the one you're living at the moment? And then once you've shortlisted your goal, write down the purpose for each goal, because each goal really represents a value, a value that you find really important for your life. And I think connecting goals with our core values is a really important practice to ensure that when we achieve that goal or progress towards achieving that goal, we really know why we really want to get there, not just for prestige uh, or for the fact that we can say we're a business owner, if we want to launch a business or make a whole ton of money, but what's the purpose for me to make this money? What's the purpose for me to have a thriving six-figure business, if that's a goal of yours, right? Having the purpose of understanding how it helps us to contribute to community or to, you know, be able to share meaningful gifts with the world, for me to help people that are in need, whatever is your purpose and your why, um, really helping, really articulating that will help you uh, to put more context to these goals and give you an emotional trigger that will help you to realize that this goal is beyond yourself. This goal is 
something for your family, for your partner, for the community you might be serving. Uh, and that can sometimes be the thing that helps you to get up in the morning and do the hard things that you need to do uh, to accomplish your goal. And then think about how your life will improve. What happens when you achieve that goal? What is that ripple effect of who you will become? Uh, what can happen with the ideal definition of success or happiness in your life that this goal really helps you to achieve? So when you really get to the crux of the purpose and the why and the intention of each goal and making sure that each goal really is meaningful to you and not just something that you, you don't duplicate it from someone else's dream board, then you're really going to make it personal for you. And that's going to help you to really start making steadfast commitments to your goals. The next thing that makes a humongous difference in whether you achieve your goals or not, or feel good while you're achieving your goals, is to actually focus on what I call goals you can control, or you can also call these progress goals. So you know how when you think of a big goal and, you know, leaving your job in 12 months time or making a $10,000 a month in your income before you quit your job, whatever your goal may be, it seems like a big chunk of a goal, doesn't it? Because from where you stand today, there's lots to be done perhaps to get to that goal. And so if we keep focusing on that being the time we celebrate and that being the only kind of pot at the end of the rainbow, right, that we're really focusing on, it can feel really demotivating motivating to create the steps because that that goal seems really far away. Now, I'm a big believer in having a big vision. So if that is your big vision, absolutely, it's a long-term vision and maybe something that can activate in the next six to 12 months. But what's actually really going to create momentum for you to know the right actions to take from where you're at today is to focus on progress goals goals you can control. Let me give you an example. So if one of your big goals that feels too big to chew and digest is writing and publishing a book, right? Instead of actually focusing on, okay, I just got to write a book. I got to write a book. That's my goal. It's really chunk down that goal into multiple progress goals, right? Progress goals, as I mentioned, are goals you can control. It is an activity. It is a measurable result. It is something that actually, if you disciplined yourself and you show up for that task, that activity consistently, and also repeatedly, eventually, right, um, as we accumulate, right, incremental efforts into these progress goals, it's going to lead you to actually achieving the final goal. So again, if your goal is to publish a book, write a book, your progress goal might be that you are going to commit to right? Every single month of writing for X amount of hours a week. It might be one day a week that you write for three hours in one sitting, right? And if you did that for 90 days, right? Three hours a week for 90 days, that's going to be a hell lot of a lot of hours towards formulating your book. So if you can actually commit to that progress goal, and be able to keep that discipline and habit to show up to write every single week, you're going to be a hell lot closer to that goal by the end of 90 days than you ever might have been before if you didn't create smaller goals to achieve that you can actually complete a month, a week, feeling a win, checking that box and going, yep, I have progressed towards my goal. Now, the human brain really needs small wins to feel motivated. And that's why chunking down that goal and having tinier wins in a progress goal that you can celebrate every week, celebrate every month is going to help you to to feel energized, to keep wanting more of that, right? Kind of feeding um, the thing inside of us that needs that happiness jolt of energy <laughs> um, instead of waiting till the, the end result, whenever that may be, uh, that's going to allow you to then celebrate. Um, and it also trains us to actually focus on what's essential, what is actually going to move the needle for our projects, for our tasks, for our goals, instead of actually just thinking about too big of a goal that isn't allowing us to actually create the necessary steps to really achieve them. And lastly, for this particular action is to create deadlines for each progress goal, right? So writing right? For the book, that's one progress goal, writing in a specific ritual that you might commit to every week. But another progress goal that you would put a deadline on potentially is finding an account accountability group to actually start writing together, you know, or doing a course on how to publish a book and be able to finish that and have a deadline of when you're actually going to finish a course like that. So having deadlines will allow you to turn a goal into a real reality for yourself rather than a never ending goal that doesn't have a timeline attached to it. And that that's also going to light some fire under your bum <laughs> and give you something to work towards and also know how to plan your schedule according to these deadlines. Okay, so now you've done the first two steps of planning and plotting out meaningful goals that's right for you. 
and then focusing on chunking down those goals into progress goals or goals you can control so that you can actually figure out what actions to take on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis to achieve them. Now, the third piece. How do you actually guarantee that you show up to do the work for these goals, right? Having a plan is not enough. We have to really look into your habits, your discipline, uh, how you're spending your time, how you're showing up for this work, even your mindset that might be preventing you from doing the work. So habits are one of the most important components of actually achieving your goals. Habits are what helps us to commit to goals because we're not just saying that we think this goal is worth committing to, we are actually creating um, a structure, right? In our environment, in our schedules, in within ourselves, in order to show up and do that work consistently. Because consistently um, is actually the name of the game. Uh, if you're consistent in taking action, you're going to achieve your goals no doubt. Uh, but where we fall flat is the consistency. We get real motivated in the beginning of the year. We start to do the yoga classes. We start to lose weight, all the things we say we want to do. And then at some point it, you know, tapers off or tapers off. What I would suggest in order to start tiny habits in order to help you show up for your goals, and, and really the key word here is also tiny. Uh, the minute you start to complicate it, the minute you start to go, I'm going to do one hour of the gym when actually you can probably much easier probably approach a 30 minute goal to work out, then you're not setting yourself up for success. You know, you don't have to stretch yourself so um, far ahead in order to start the momentum. Maybe you might add on more hours, add on more uh, things to your habits and your goals in the future. But in the beginning, it's just actually getting into the practice of showing up, right, to do the work for your goal. So ch choose a tiny, tiny, tiny habit. So for example, uh, if you're someone starting a side hustle while you're working full time and you're finding that one of your bad habits is that you tend to get de-energized after work or you never get to end up finding time to work on your side hustle, you might want to cultivate a tiny habit of choosing one day out of the week that you're not bombarded by um, your nine to five work. Maybe it's a weekend and you commit to two hours blocks of time that you just sit down and work on your side hustle on that day every single week, same day, same time. And that's a tiny habit that you can cultivate because it's easy for you to just time block, literally time block that time in your calendar as if you're showing up for a job, you're showing up for a gig and that gig is your business. So I did film a really great video on the importance of time blocking and theming your days to increase productivity, especially when you're working a full-time job and learning how to launch a business. Uh, and I'm gonna put it up there um, in the cards above so that you can watch that video after this this one in order to learn how to time block and create that tiny action for yourself. Let's say if you have a fitness goal and you're finding it hard to just do a long-term plan, you know, to um, creating fitness goals in your life, right? And attending a one-hour class just seems something improbable at the moment for you. Fret not, choose a tinier habit. What's a tiny habit that could help you to just create movement? You don't have to do a one-hour yoga class, but what's it going to help you to start your day having a great morning routine to just move your body for quick 15 minutes or 20 minutes or whatever minutes you have to spare? A tiny action you could do, a tiny habit you could cultivate is just laying out your mat right in front of your, your bedroom door so that that might be, you know, the thing that you take with you in the morning, your yoga mat to a quiet space and be able to just lie down, do a quick stretch, maybe do a couple of yoga poses if that's your thing. Uh, and that's going to allow you again uh, to show up to do something small, show up to create that consistency and that habit. And when you really show up consistently after at least about 30 days, then you can start to really increase um, your scale of how much more that you might want to do, but you've proven to yourself, right, that you can do this thing for 30 days. So chunk it down again, just like we chunk down goals, chunk down your habits to 30 day increments that you can evaluate and change up and really figure out what can get in your way. What are distractions? How do you want to show up for each goal that works for you? Give yourself a little experimental initial 30 days to work out the kinks and choose tinier habits uh, to help you to help make it easier for you to actually practice the goal. Think about your environment, right? Um, get an accountability partner if you need it. Think about the things and items in your house that are distracting you or people that you need to inform to help you with this goal. Um, prepare your environment for success is going to help you to actually commit to these goals and get the support you need. All right. 
I hope you've enjoyed these three non-negotiable things to consider as you plan your goals in order to really commit and create momentum to achieving your goals this year in 2021 and beyond. Now, if you want to dive deeper with me, I am hosting an absolutely free masterclass uh, that is going to be happening and free for all to attend. You can sign up with the card uh, link that I'm providing above or in the descriptions of the video below in order to sign up. And right away, you're going to be able to get a couple instructions of how to join, uh, when you can access the video, and a supporting guide that's going to help you to not only map out your goals and find the right goals that are meaningful for the life plan that you have, but we're going to work on this tiny habit habits, small actions you can take and work out what our progress goals might be for each goal. And that's really just going to set you up for success. And I think uh, is a fresh new way and a, and a way and approach that I think you'll really like in, in planning your goals uh, in a more effective way. So I hope you join me. Thank you so very much for coming here and watching this video today. I wish you uh, the best of success for 2021. Uh, and if there's anything that you have questions around after watching this video, please submit a comment below uh, and any topics that you might want me to cover uh, that would be interesting to you. I really appreciate you and this community, uh, and I can't wait to get back at you for another video coming soon. Have a good day.